Hi everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today we're inside a 2014 Mazda 3 hatchback taking a look at the all-new Mazda Connect infotainment system. This is an all-new 7-inch LCD touchscreen infotainment system that's going to be spreading its way across the Mazda lineup. It's starting out here in the Mazda 3. It's not available in the base model of the Mazda. It's optional in the one grade up, and it's standard in the higher-end trims of the Mazda 3. We do expect this to arrive in the Mazda 6 and the other models of Mazdas in the United States relatively soon. It is a much more advanced system than the outgoing Mazda system. In fact, the one that's currently in the Mazda 6 is one of my least favorite systems in the entire industry, and this brand new system is easily one of my favorites. The system is based around this 7-inch high-resolution touchscreen LCD. It's mounted right on the dashboard, and it looks very similar to BMW's latest iDrive systems that you'll find in the BMW 3 Series, the 5 Series, the 6 Series, etc. It kind of looks like a tablet PC that's been grafted onto the dashboard. Some people have made fun of that, but I actually think that the look is quite attractive. It definitely is very prominent in the car and it delivers a good eye line to the screen. So if you're looking out the dashboard, this is a very easy thing to see without being distracted so you can keep your eyes closer to the road. In addition to this touchscreen, we also have a multi-way controller joystick and button arrangement in the center console. We have a home button, a music media button, a navigation button, a favorite button, a back button, and then we have this rotary joystick. This is a selectable rotary joystick, so you just click down to select. You can toggle up, down, side to side. You can also rotate it. Over here you find the power button and the volume knob, so that's a volume knob and power button. If I'm honest, the volume and power knob being right here does strike me a little bit odd. Audi does this as well in the Audi MMI system. Strikes me as a little bit peculiar in the MMI system as well. The combination of a touchscreen input method as well as a controller joystick is relatively unique. Infinity as well as Nissan tend to do this as well, and I find it very handy because some items it's easier to touch the option right on the screen rather than use the rotary dial and selector knob, and some things it's a little bit easier to use that rotary knob for, and this system allows you to select which one you want to use. For instance, entering an address in this system is a little bit convoluted using this rotary joystick. However, it's much easier to just type it in using the touch screen. Let's go over the general features one at a time. First off, we have the communication option, which is that central option in the system. This is basically your Bluetooth phone interface. We do have full access to our favorites, our contacts, call history. We can text message in the system if your device supports it. Because I am using an iPhone 5, my device does not support text messaging. We also have settings. We can pair phones. You can change how you want the system to operate with your device, etc. Returning to the main screen is very easy. You can either click the home right there, or you can click the home right on the controller joystick. If we select the option for navigation, you'll see the other thing that I really like about Mazda Connect. This system, unlike all the other systems out on the market, remembers where you left off. So if you're trying to enter a navigation destination and then someone calls you on the phone and you end up in that phone interface, or if you want to change your tunes or whatever it is you want to do in the system, and then you want to come back to navigation, this will remember where you were. So it's very easy to take right back off and enter an address into the system. Hit the check mark button. And then as you can see, when you enter an address like that, it'll look up in the database and see what streets match what you've entered. It makes it a lot easier to enter an address if you don't know the exact zip code or the exact city, etc. Mazda's navigation software is very responsive and it offers 3D views with topographic information as well as a default 2D view as well. Interacting with the system is very easy using either the touchscreen or that rotary controller. Mazda Connect gets its traffic information via HD radio, so you do not need a Sirius XM subscription like you do in other systems in order to have traffic information on this display. Let's skip on over the media for a moment and go to applications. Mazda tells us that there will be additional applications available for this system over time. Right now we simply have these four. We have this HD radio traffic map right here, so you can see a static map of where the uh, traffic incidents near you are. We can drag this screen like you see there, or you can use the rotary joystick in the middle to control it as well. You can either hit the back button or you can hit that little arrow to go back. We also have our fuel economy monitor in the car. Right now we've been averaging 29.3 miles per gallon. This has been with a great deal of idling in this car. This is the two liter version of the Mazda 3 and our overall average has been closer to about 35 miles per gallon during uh, my week with the car. But again, a lot of idling, a lot of photo shoots has dropped the mileage right there. You also have this button at the bottom to help bring you back to shortcuts in the system. You have our maintenance reminders here. You can have uh, scheduled maintenance reminders turned on in the car so you can remember when you need to go back to the dealer or when you need to go back to your shop to have oil changes, etc. You can also have tire rotations scheduled right there as well. Now let's move on to the entertainment. We'll hit the entertainment direct access button right there on the controller system. 
On the media interface, we have a variety of different options across the bottom. You can either touch them or you can use that rotary control knob to select them. If you use the rotary control knob, it will give you a little hint as to what those items are before you select it. So this is audio sources. This is the root menu on your USB or your iDevice. We have song list. This takes you to the current playlist that you're playing. Hit repeat, shuffle, more like this. This will try and search your USB or your iDevice to try and play similar songs or what the system thinks are similar. Of course, forward, backward, pause, and then sound settings. Part of this system in the Mazda 3 that we're with right now is this Bose Centerpoint surround system, which does have a very good sound to it. The benefit of using the touchscreen in this system is that we can drag items. So you can drag the song forward and backward to fast forward or rewind the song, depending on what you'd like to do. If you're digging around in a playlist, you also have the ability to drag your playlist up and down as well. If we go back, you'll find we can go to the root menu of the device. If we click on the artist selection, you'll notice we also get an alphabetical listing right over here on the side. So we can drag that separately of the list and then try and find artists in the H's. The system is very responsive. It caches the data from your USB or your iDevice and you can see it lets you scroll quite far forward in the list. So the faster you swipe that, the further down the list it will go. Very much like competing systems from Ford, General Motors, as well as Toyota, you can now completely voice command your USB or your iDevice media library from within the system. You just click that voice control button on the steering wheel and you tell it play artist so and so and it will then try and find them in the system. If we click the audio sources button in the system, you'll notice we have AHA, Pandora, and Stitcher right here with the other media sources. That's because this system doesn't throw them in an apps menu like you'll find in other systems. I think this is a little bit more logical since they are audio sources. You'll also find Bluetooth streaming, USB 1, USB 2, if I can actually stay on that menu, um, as well as the single slot CD player and the auxiliary input that's in that center console. Clicking on over to Pandora in the system, we have to allow access on our USB or our iDevice, and then it will launch the Pandora app right here on the radio interface. Once loaded, Pandora allows us full access to our station list. We can thumbs up, thumbs down songs, we can bookmark them, pause them, go to the next track, then right over there on that other side is again the audio settings for the system. That brings us finally onto the settings menu in the car. You'll see we have a wide variety of vehicle settings right in the system from display settings to safety settings. Again, depending on how many safety systems you have in your Mazda, this will be different. We only have the blind spot monitoring system right here in this car, but if you had pre-collision warning, etc., there would be additional options there. You can again change your sound settings. We have the clock settings. We have vehicle settings like door locks, turn signals, and lighting. On the devices tab, we have Bluetooth as well as a Wi-Fi interface in the system. It does allow you to pair with certain Wi-Fi devices. And then we have overall system settings over here. Mazda promises that they plan to continually update the software in the system as well as offering additional apps right down there. We'll also see this spread across the Mazda lineup, but I think that's a very good thing. This is one of the best infotainment systems out on the market. It's very intuitive, very easy to use, and the display is very crisp and readable while you're driving. Versus competing systems from Honda, Nissan, as well as Toyota, I find the system easier to use, it's more intuitive, it's more attractive, it's also more feature rich. I find the placement of the screen and the dashboard definitely better than most of those systems as well. Versus my Ford Touch, the system doesn't have quite the array of features that Ford offers in that product. However, I think this is more intuitive, it's also definitely more responsive. Chrysler's Uconnect takes this to the next level, offering a few more features in the system, but I don't find its interface just as intuitive as this system. I think this is just a hair better than that Chrysler Uconnect system. I think this, interestingly enough, competes very well with BMW's iDrive, which is probably my all-time favorite infotainment system, regardless of brand at this moment. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been the Mazda Connect system inside the 2014 Mazda 3 hatchback. Go ahead and click down there at the bottom of your screen to subscribe to this video. There'll also be some links at the end of the video, so you can click on over to our complete review of the 2014 Mazda 3 five-door hatchback. Go ahead and like this video. Tell me what you liked and didn't like about it in that comment section down below. You can also email me at alex at alexonautos.com. Find me at facebook.com slash alexonautos, and we'll see you next week.